Alrighty folks, this is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. So, I'm happy to uh, know that the sealed um, qualifiers, the sealed open is now gone, so I don't have to uh, hear everyone hear anyone talk about it anymore. So then we can just uh, move on to a regular drafts and uh, go from there. Because really, people shouldn't be making a big deal of these sealed pools, it's all variants at the end of the day. Um, at the end of the day, when you get um, two players at the same caliber um, at building decks and playing Magic, it's all it comes down to really variance and who opens up the better sealed pool. Hate to say it, but that's the truth. And whoever gets the more luckier draws. And at at the higher at the higher levels, it's not too difficult knowing what to build really, and it just becomes super obvious. Um, so you're just basically handed a bunch of cards. And um, it either comes out, turns out to be very good or not, whereas Draft has less variance, of course, and requires, I think, rewards you more for making the correct decisions instead of uh, sealed. So let's fire this one off and see where we end up. Pack one, pick one, Premier Draft, Strixhaven. We opened up a decent rare, not an incredibly broken rare, but a pretty good one good in both Silver Quill and Witterbloom, um, so it could be my first pick. The Uncommons, Academic Dispute is a bit of a sleeper, solid card, definitely um, overperforms, um, but I wouldn't play more than one copy. There is Snakeskin Veil, which is almost like Academic Disputes, overperforms as well, but I wouldn't play more than one copy. Golden Ratio is a nice card draw, but usually in the Quandrix or in the Quandrix decks you have a lot of uh, card advantage already. Best Commons is the Quandrix Pledge Mage. Uh, between Quadrix Pledge Mage and Callous Blood Mage, they are actually, believe it or not, quite close in terms of power level. Um, um, it really depends on your preference. Do you prefer to draft black or do you prefer to draft blue in this set? Um, overall, I think I like the uh, the Pledge Mage since um, I'm a bigger fan of the blue, blue in this set than I am in the black. Like, the only black deck I'm happy really drafting is um, Silver Quill. I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything too bad about Witterbloom, but Witterbloom requires a little bit more work. So I think the Pledge Mage makes sense over the um, the rare. Look at this set, a lot of great Quandrix cards. I mean, can I just take this whole pack and then just um, skip half of the pack already? Decisive Denial, Cultivator, Bearing Books, Fractal Summoning, Needlethorn Drake. I think I would take Cultivator over um, Decisive Denial, Bearing Books, Needlethorn Drake, and less the Lesson since it's just a really nice, po powerful 4-drop. That can help you ramp, which Quandrix is just trying to do. Um, like these cards are all fantastic. Nice utility tool. One of the best lessons, probably the best lesson in the set. Great defensive two drop. Versatile fight spell and counter spell. Um, but I think I'm just liking the Cultivator here, and I don't mind committing to Quandrix since we already have a Quandrix Pledge Mage. Quandrix Pledge Mage actually, believe it or not, overperforms in the more aggressive Prismari decks, but still going to be very strong in Quandrix and. I'm fine taking here, otherwise the more flexible options would be Bury and Fractal. Not sure which one I would take between both of them, they're all really good, so... Just drop the Quandrix deck, or Teamer, who knows. Maybe we go Teamer with Heated Debate. There's also Biomathematician, if I want to go all-in with Quandrix. Um, this card is also really strong. Do I just go all-in? I mean, I'm not against it. I'm also a big fan of Teamer in this set. If you do splash, since uh, um, Prismari and Quandrix combines the best, in this set, and um, if you have a Quadrix base with a lot of ramp, you can ramp into the late game um, powerful Prismari cards. I mean, the powerful, um, powerful Prismari cards, yes. So, he the bait could be an option, but I mean, Bile Mathematician just keeps us on color. It's still a very good three drop. So, I think I like this. In reality, I think the Heat the Bait is obviously the choice, but I think I'll just stay on color and just take the Bile Mathematician since it seems like the person to my right doesn't respect the uh, Quadrix. Elemental Summoning is a fine lesson, better in Prismari, but still really good. And then we have Buried Books and Needlethorn Drake. Harness Infinity is kind of a fun card to pull off. If you can play a grindy, um, controlling Witterbloom deck, this card can uh, help you win the late game. Um, I think it's just Burying Books. Um, one of the more important commons to have in this set. Always happy to play two copies of these. Um, hopefully we can pick up some of the lessons later. And I would probably take the lesson over Needlethorn Drake, but not over Burying Books. And then we can take an Arcane Subtraction, although there's a pretty late Heated Debate, which is kind of interesting to note. 
I think it's definitely better than arcane subtraction, and these tend to wheel anyway, so maybe we just end up splashing red for heat debate, which is usually a thing. So gonna take the heat debate here. By far the best card in the pack, still pretty late. And just maybe draft some sort of teamer ramp deck. And if we open up Magma Opus, it's gonna be incredibly busted. Um, this pack, nothing exciting. Pretty underwhelming pack. Could always just take Cram Session as a decent way to learn, since now that people know that Learn and Lessons are really powerful in this set, they just tend to get grabbed up. And um, since people just grab them up um, all the time, um, you just there's just not too many ways to learn and grab lessons. Cram Session is always decent, gives you a bit of life, helps you learn for cheap. So I don't hate it. Whirlwind could also be fine, but usually there's Negate in the set, which does a um, similar role or test for talents, but just take a cram session. And then hopefully we pick up Environmental Sciences to Splash for Heat Debate. Wow. Divide by zero, pick seven. This is one of the best uncommons in the set. Not not, not an incredibly busted uncommon, but a very good one. Not only as a way to learn, but it can also be like a temporary counterspell, a way to balance creatures. Unfortunately, if, if it only bounced, could bounce tokens, it would be incredibly powerful, more powerful than it is, obviously, but still very good. So I'm going to take Divide by zero as a powerful... Um, way to learn a nice interaction spell so um yeah the deck is coming along very nicely not getting baited by the rare the rare is good though but but nothing too exciting can always main deck crows crows and grip and i mean always can always put this in the sideboard i guess and if i take up more quandrix cultivators biograph could be okay um spell satchel not a big fan of this card I mean, I could just take it to try it out. I don't mind some sort of two-mana way to ramp. Like, if you play this on turn two, and then you cast, like, an instant with this, it just becomes a decent mana rock, which is fine. Overall, the pack just doesn't look exciting at all. I could just hit Rare Draft, but I think maybe Spell Satchel, we could try it out for once and see how good it really is. And, wow, Golden Ratio really late. Usually, there's a lot of card draw in blue, so you don't need to prioritize Golden Ratio as highly, but it's definitely still very good. Um, I wouldn't mind... Snakeskin Veil as well, but um, card draw is card draw, and that's how you win. In Col in Quandrix, you just play a bunch of card draw, and then you just ramp into your late game bombs and win. And uh, Golden Ratio nice plays very well with Bio Mathematician as well. And wow, late Fractal Summoning. Got to take it here over Skirt Colony. I'm also a big fan of Skirt Colony in the Quandrix decks, uh, but they but you know I don't usually usually one or two copies is really nice since they just, since they, they just become pretty large in a late game and becomes a nightmare for uh, decks with lots of flying to deal with but gonna take the fractal summoning since I need more lessons to learn and fractal is really powerful and we'll take our arcane subtraction always don't mind playing one copy of these as a way to potentially learn and then we'll take a needle thorn drake as a nice two drop there's also test for talents test of talents as our kind of negates effect and then heated debate and then Letter of Acceptance can help us splash, but gonna take the good two drop here, help us place defense, and then just take the Servant and put it in the sideboard. And then, yep. Yeah. Alright, this deck looks uh, pretty decent. It's coming along very nicely, and then uh, hopefully we can just um, pick up some more goodies. Uh, there's another Divide by Zero. Elite Spellbinder is really sh strong. If I had, no for sure, if I, if I had Environmental Sciences, I would take Elite Spellbinder here. Um, I mean, we'd have a lot of threes. Opt could actually be the pick over the Divide by Zero here, just as a cheap way to improve our draw steps. Nice way to trigger Magecraft with the Quandrix Pledge Mage. Uh, there's also another fine lesson we can grab as well. Um, I think I'm liking the Opt over Divide, since the three drops are getting kind of crowded here, and if our man... And if our curve is a little bit too clunky with multiple divide by zeros, it can be kind of awkward. We also have a decent way of ways to learn already, so I think I'm digging the opt here. Pretty interesting first pick. I think it's Elite Spellbinder to divide by zero, pack one, pick one, and then into maybe Elemental Summoning, but we'll just take an opt just to improve our deck quality because it's what we're looking for. And uh, speaking of, uh, wow, there's also Environmental Sciences. I'm hoping the Biomathematician wheels, but I think the Environmental Sciences is just one of the more impressive um, one of the most impressive lessons to have in this set, if not the most important lesson. Helps you s fix more cards like Heated Debate, helps you splash, hit your land drops, gains life. If this wasn't his pack, another Bomb Mathematician would be great since it plays, again, very well with Golden Ratio, but Environmental Sciences has to be the choice here, I have to imagine. And then Decisive Denial, also, also really awesome. Um, there's also Elemental Summoning, another decent lesson. 
but I don't think I can take it over decisive denial. There's a negate, but we can always pick up one later. This is just a very versatile card, good fight spell, and also a great way to uh, counter a late game card. This pack doesn't look great. The, the, a more mediocre lesson. The Witterbloom command is pretty bad. Could always just uh, take a Professor Zoomancy to have another decent four drop, which is always fine. Since we have a Needlethorn Drake already, could use some more mid range threat, mid mid range threats. So Professor seems good. Could also consider splashing for Mortality Spear, but um, I think we're looking to splash the Heat the Bait since we already have a color off color. Just want to take up more of the on color stuff to ensure that I have a solid deck. And then we'll take a Skirt Colony on two. There's also the Serpentine Curve, but we'll take the Colony first. And uh, yeah, just a good two drop. Spell Satchel. Yeah, Spell Satchel is pretty bad, but I might still play it if I have more instances or sorceries. Um, I don't mind the Karak Wrangler. can be decent with more ways to enable Magecraft like Opt. And just a fine filler 5 drop. Pretty late Mage Hunter's Onslaught. Cure rate's medium, but just take another decent 5 here. And then Eureka Moment is fantastic. Love how this just bridges the gap on turn 4. One of my favorite commons in this set. Just incredibly powerful, gives a bunch of card advantage, and then just helps you ramp, which is not much. It's not which is really great. But I would take Field Trip over Eureka. I think I would rate Field Trip as the best green common, and then like Eureka Moment and then Mage Duel. Pop Quiz is also fantastic. Another way to learn and uh, help us draw cards. So yeah, we're getting there with the Mage Craft and the Learn. So um, now next pack we can maybe pick up more lessons to improve the deck quality. We have Arcane Cram Session. Um, also, divide by zero and pop quiz as ways to learn now. And then we have heat debate as a decent splash. Serpentine Curve. There's also Campus. Um, I'm liking actually the Campus over the Serpentine Curve since I do need to improve my mana base and hopefully I can pick up one of these later. Yeah, I think I need the land here for sure. And the lands are really nice since they help you ramp and wow. Second Bio Mathematician. Okay, we're definitely in the right spot. Um, and then just take a Biograph in case we need some random 5. Even though it's pretty bad. I mean, it's okay in Witterbloom, but really... Um, the car is underperformed, and even a late Needlethorn Drake. There's also Pest Summoning, but again, one of more weaker lessons. I'd rather just have Elemental and the Fractal Summonings here. It's always nice to have two of these on turn two to play defense against the more aggressive decks. You can always main deck Fortifying Draught. And then, yep, this deck looks decent, so minus four if we're not... I mean, I guess we're, we're definitely splashing for Heated Debate, because it's really strong. So, um, yep, this deck looks fine. Alright, next pack, Natural Order. Um, the card's worth money, but it's not something you want to play in a Quandrix deck. More playable in Witterbloom. If you can make Pest Tokens and sack the Pest Tokens and bring out your Bomb, it can be pretty nice. Uh, this is a nice Bomb Rare to pack one pick one, but I think we're just going to take a Fractal Summoning. Since, again, we have a decent amount of learn, and we could use maybe an extra lesson here. So, Fractal Summoning seems good. Ooh, multiple choices of bomb. Yeah, not going to pass this up. Uh, yep, you gain card advantage. It's just so powerful. You can you can set them off tempo, you draw a card, and you make a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, definitely very powerful. If this wasn't this pack, I wouldn't mind an Elemental Masterpiece as a nice late game card to uh, ramp into and splash as well. But I think I'll take a multiple choice. I uh, could use a Prismari Campus if I'm looking to splash. So... This is kind of our deck. Um, okay, speaking of late game cards, I do like the second colony, but I might prefer the Leyline Invocation. In terms of ramp, we actually don't have that much ramp, believe it or not. Only two ramp creatures on turn four. So maybe this is not really a ramp deck. Um, so maybe we just take the second Scourge Colony. 
I mean, like, we want to rant with this as well, but we'll eventually get there. I don't know. Um, it's pretty interesting to note. I could also just diversify anyways, just take the Ley Line Invocation. I mean, Fractal Summings are almost like Ley Line Invocations, not sure. Um, you know what, let's just take the Invocation. Yep, seems fine. Ooh, Tempted by Auric. Now, this card is really powerful. There's also Frost Trickster. Wow, these cards are all very strong. I mean, Tempted for Auric can just win games by itself. We might not, not even need to splash a heat debate now, given that uh, the card quality is incredibly high. Like, people are not tempted to play Tempted by Auric because it's triple blue. But uh, yeah, this game is can just this card is just a powerful bomb. Gonna take it here. If this wasn't his pack, probably take Quandrix Cultivator. But yeah, Tempted is really strong. So I'm gonna take it here. And then um, Field Trip is also fantastic. More ways to help us learn. And then um, nice way to help us ramp. Um, there's a Frost Trickster, which is... Uh, much better in a more aggressive deck, but still fine. And not a Rika moment, but Field Trip is fantastic. So now we don't have to play... Ooh, now we can play take a Serpentine Curve. Finally got one. I think this deck is going to be very good, the Serpentine Curve. And yeah, I don't even think we need to Splash Red. Because we're at full playables. I could still Splash Red still. Um, and then just toss in a Heated Debate if I don't have anything. Um, I can just take the Reckless Amplomancer. Not sure if I'll play it though. But yeah, I could still splash for Heated Debate, maybe just toss in that one mountain to cast it, and it's totally fine. But the card quality of this deck is already really high, so... I might not need it. I could always cut the Professor of Zoomancy in case I pick up the, um... Ooh, another Golden Ratio, wow. Another Field Trip as well. Even Cultivate. Cultivate's very strong. Um, Field Trip is also very good. I already have one Golden Ratio. Um, you know what? Let's actually take um, Cultivate here, or just another Field Trip. Field Trip, I guess, it's almost the same thing. I mean, I don't know. Let's take Cultivate. And then here, Waterfall Aerialist. Don't know if I'll play that. Ooh, Elemental Masterpiece. Okay, I think we're going to try to splash red. So now with Cultivate and Field Trip on all of these late game cards, I think I like this. And then, wow, even Skirt Colony late. Jesus, yeah, this, this, this deck is stacked. So if we are going to splash for the Elemental Masterpiece, we can splash for the Heat of the Bay as well. Wow, another Quandrix Cultivator. So I guess we don't need to play the Professor anymore. Ooh, even Prismari Campus. Yeah, we basically have it all here. It's not even a, qu a question... So now the only question is how do we build a deck, which is going to be a little bit of an issue. Maybe I just don't need the Karak Wrangler here. And right now we're at 25 cards if we want to splash for red and um, and um, play Cultivate, Field Trip, and uh, late game uh, removal spell. I guess we don't need the Arcane Subtraction then. Even though it's a way to learn, we have Divide by Zero Pop Quiz, Field Trip as ways to learn. Things that we can grab, the Elemental Summoning, Double Fractal Summoning as well. Um, so just one more card. Um, let's see, the deck is looking very good. Decent amount of twos, I like the Opt. I like all these three drops. Um, Maybe I, maybe I do just cut Serpentine Curve, or maybe I just cut the Heated Debate. Although, maybe I just cut Cultivate. Like, Cultivate does help me ramp, but... Um, or maybe just a Biomathematician. Yeah, maybe Bio can just go, and that way we can just play the Cultivate. And then, by playing the Cultivate here, we not only have more ways to ramp on turn 3, but we can easily splash a Heated Debate and Elemental Masterpiece, which is quite good. In terms of instances of sorcery, we do have a decent amount, 15. So the Serpentine Curve will be an okay body. Plus we have ways to learn to grab the instances and also cast them. So that seems fine. Looking at the sideboard, um, yeah, I, I don't like to pass up the Biomathematicians, but I think it's necessary because we're mostly trying to get to the late game to um, cast our stuff, and uh, this is fine. The cramp Sessions, medium, but we do have like Pop Quiz already, Divide by Zero, Field Trip to learn. Um, the Wrangler's medium. Yeah, I mean, this is the deck, I think. Um, I do like the Cram Session, though. So do I just take it over Opt, maybe? I mean, it just gives me another opportunity to learn, really. And, um, 
makes it more likely I, I can find my environmental sciences or cast my, cast my fractal summonings in the late game. So this is more or less likely the deck we're looking at, which is quite good. Could, could always cut the pop quiz, but again, it's a nice way to learn. Cultivate can help us splash for red. There's also the, the game plan where we don't need to splash for red, and we can just cut Heed Debate, cut Elemental Masterpiece, throw in Biomathematician or Carrick Wrongler, but I think they're a lot worse overall. They do help the deck have a little bit more consistency, but it's not like amazing by any means. So I think I just like the deck like this. And then the mana base, we can just toss in one mountain with one Prismari Campus. Um, so this is 6-7, six, 6-7-8. Seven, six, seven, and then we can just add in a forest and an um, island. And then, um, so 14, 7-8-9, seven, 7-8, eight, seven, eight, and then 2. And then we have ways to splash with Cultivate, Field Trip, can, and ways to learn to grab our environmental sciences and so forth. Alright, so this deck looks pretty fun. Let's give it a shot, see how it goes. And the picture. Um, man, I wish I could use some of these blue pictures. Uh, what would make sense? I guess Cultivate. Yeah, Cultivate would make sense. And this card, this deck just looks incredibly powerful, so hopefully we can get there. The only problem with the deck is there's just not too much evasion, though. So that can become a potential problem. So against like a very aggressive hyper deck that's playing lots of tappers and flyers. It might have some issues, but if we're able to just ramp, really ramp a lot and then just cast a lot of our um, large spells, we can just win the game that way. If we're able to just smash in constantly. I guess it's also weak to Death Touch, so should have thought about that as well. You know what, actually I like the Arcane Subtraction over Cram Session. Like I know you can play the Cram Session, but now that I think about it, um, the Death Touch could be a problem. And the Arcane Subtraction is just has more utility, I think, than gaining 4 life. Not sure, I mean, Cram Session I don't mind, but I think we want to take a learn card that has utility in the deck that's looking to play <coughs> a bunch of large creatures. Because if we're trying to attack with large creatures, um, we want a way to maybe shrink their power down to get in some good attacks, and this is one. So, double checking. Don't think I need this, don't think I need this, don't think I need this. I don't think I need this, so this looks very good, so we'll give this a shot. Okay, we can play our 3-drop and then Cultivate, seems fine. No blue mana, but Cultivate can help us find blue and red mana, this, this, this card is really good. And we're at least curving out, at least. So against maybe another Quandrix deck or Sultai. And then here we also have a Heat Debate to follow up, so we're gonna attack for 2 here. And then play our Cultivator, give me our Pledge Mage, and then cast Cultivate the following turn. Play blue mana, and then get the red mana online. Cycling Plum, sure. So once we get the 6 mana early, we can enable the Skirt Colony and also grow the Pledge Mage. Blood Researcher, we can always kill. I can always Decisive Denial that, but I think this turn we just want to cast Cultivate. Um, get the blue mana online. And then get the red mana. 
Um, I think I want the red mana tapped, right? Because we have more blue sources. And then we can also just cast the island. The question is, do I attack with the two twos? Um, you know what? I don't mind a trade because this can grow larger over time. And I don't mind sneaking for two here. And then we still have our removal spells, heat debate, decisive denial for next turn, or just cast a giant leyline invocation. But you can see the power of Cultivate now, just thinning out the deck and then helping us find our colors that we're missing out on. There's also, it's also possible that we might have way too much ramp in this deck, but I think that's fine. This is going to become a 4-4, four, four, but Heat Debate will take care of it. Hoping he just casts the uh, environmental sciences and doesn't fight my pledge mage or anything. And then just play ma play for me. I guess he has a mage duel. Okay, sure. This is usually the case. Take four and then hopefully I just heated the bait this. And I will main phase it before it gets out of hand. And then we can keep up Decisive Denial, play the land so we can eventually get the 8. And then Seiko also grows our Leyline Invocation the more lands we play, so... I, I think I'm fine with letting that resolve. It would be mi pretty mean to counter that, actually, so... Tempted by Auric. Okay. Then we'll just make a 7-7. Seven, seven. So, could use more blue mana for Tempted. So, might skew the mana towards blue, now that I think about it. Probably an Onslaught. Rise of Exodus is a good one. Also allowing him to learn, so... Alright, we can always main phase Eureka moments. And there's a golden ratio which I can't cast, so just attack for two Sigo. Eventually we'll get there, but you know, we're definitely ahead in the race right now. So second blue source would be nice since I can cast Needlethorn and draw two with the golden ratio. Tenured Incaster for 5. I mean, a 5-man 3-3 is basically not even anything I want to care give too much care about. I think I just attack for 4 here and then see what's up. If he has a trick, I'll just blow him out with a fight spell. And then I think I'm fine playing Needlethorn Drake and then casting the Golden Ratio to draw more cards. He might kill a creature in response, but no kill. And then we could just play a Skirt Colony and then just have another 4 4 down, so that's really nice. Can just cast multiple choice for a 4 as well. I think I just do that now. Bounce a token, and then we can still attack. Bomb the land. Got one anyways. Um, yeah, we want to bounce your creature, right? And then we still make a 4-4. Four -four. And I can attack and fall. Yep. And we'll keep up the size of the Nile in case he has a trick. Fine with the chump. Vanishing verse. Um, I guess he can counter that. I guess we can't counter that, so we'll let the removal spell resolve. 
And then we'll see. Go. So we definitely need a lot more blue, I think, for Tempted. So I'm going to slightly lean towards blue in this deck now. Since um, it's a little bit difficult casting this. But uh, still very powerful. And can pop quiz main phase, which I don't mind. And then we can still, we still got blue mana, so now we can grab the fractal summoning. Play land, and then I'm fine attacking with both everything. And I still want to keep up the decisive denial because uh, it can be kind of scary if he casts like a harness infinity out of nowhere or some sort of sweeper that I can't counter. Could have to plumb the Forbidden or Snakeskin Veil. Do I care? Not really. I think it's okay. And then I think I'm fine just playing the Neothorn Drake, keeping up the counter spell in case something bad was to happen. And he casts some sort of expensive sweeper that I need to deal with, so I think that's fine. Yep, and we got him. Okay, so I just want to um, take out green mana and add it blue. Seven, eight, nine, seven, eight. I mean, I guess we are favoring blue, but we just didn't draw our blue sources, and I think we need a lot of green, so sure, I guess, um, yeah, I guess we needed more blue anyway, so yeah, looking at the deck again, we can always consider this, 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 um, or even the flyer over maybe another Needlethorn Drake, but I like the double Needlethorn. So let's keep going. This set's all about um, doing big things, learning lessons, getting value from big things, getting out your lands. So Quandrix is uh, really good in this set. Probably, I think Teamer is the best. Teamer controls the best archetype, followed by maybe like Quandrix and the Silver Quill. Um, I mean, if we can get land three, we don't have any instances, but it's still a solid keep. So we'll see. If we can get land four, I mean, that would also be great. So. We sell some twos to play as well, so I'm going to leave the Scourge Colony since it hits harder. Might just play Mathematician first, because I don't want my Pledge Mage to get killed too easily. Do I just stay back? Killing on is kind of scary, so I might just stay back here. Don't mind a double block, actually, if he uses a pump trick, at least I can kill it. I think I'm double blocking here. Hopefully I don't get blown out, because this is definitely a scary card I need to get rid of. And I might as well get rid of it now while I can. Oh wow, this that was a blowout. Okay, well, you can always bounce it back if we have mana. But I probably want to maybe cast a Bile Mathematician first to maybe disincentivize an attack. Yeah, that was very scary. Jesus, even closing statement giving him the extra counters. Yeah, that was a blowout, a nice powerful 2 for 1. And now I'm going to get 3 for 1 by Killian if I decide to double block. Maybe I just take it. 
But then if I don't bait out the, the removal spells now, how else am I going to deal with it? I don't know. <laughs> Hoping he attacks. But he doesn't because maybe he's out of spells. Um, that's a good one. But probably just need to cast the Pledge Mage first. And then maybe hopefully I can keep up the um, Decisive Denial next turn or do something else. Shock. Okay, Stun Ring. That's fine. Guess I'll be taking five for now, but... Yeah, it's definitely uh, scary. Killian on turn two is really scary. One of the best uncommons in the set. Definitely might even take this over Environmental Sciences pack one pick one or Heated Debates. Who knows? It's just so powerful. So maybe some sort of Mardu mid-range deck. Dust Speaker, that's scary. I guess I can keep up Arcane and Decisive Denial and Sigo. Mm, I don't really want him gaining value off of this Ardent Dust Speaker, but it might just have to be the kill over Killian. We'll see if he has a removal spell here. Study break. I mean, I guess I have to let that resolve. I can't really counter it or anything, so yeah, that's unfortunate. I can maybe bounce the Ardent Dust Speaker and put him behind. I think I have to. Because it's just going to generate card advantage, and I think that's worse than actually Killian here. And I think I I can chump here. Chumping is not too bad, but I mean, maybe I don't. Because I saw so I at least force him to even start from scratch somehow. If I do have land, I don't mind keeping up Decisive Denial and Arcane Subtraction as well. So maybe I can blow him out next turn, hopefully. Because I can definitely stabilize against this. As long as I deal with the Pledge Mage and the Killian, I think I'm good. Necrotic Fumes, that's a good one as well. Um, yeah, that's a problem. I think I need to keep up my instances and say go. So I can maybe use the Pledge Mage to fight the Silver Quill Apprentice. And then Arcane Subtraction on Killian. I mean, although he could just cast a stupid Stark from scratch. So that's also a problem. I mean, the Flyer is going to become a problem. Yeah, I think the flyer is going to be the bigger problem. And hopefully he doesn't cast Stark from scratch here. And I can just block Killian and kill him. But he probably will. Yeah, I probably see a removal spell here. That's really annoying. Sure. So I won't have a good double block next turn, which is really annoying, since he can just kill my creature. So maybe I do just cycle the Arcane Subtraction now. And then maybe grab Environmental Sciences so I don't fall behind on, in life. Mm, pop quiz, I guess I just want to cultivate. He's going to kill my creature. I'll take three. 
can also sciences grab land and play pop quiz, but I don't think that's good. I think this is fine. And then we can grab green mana. And then we can also just cast maybe Cultivator into environmental sciences next turn so you go. So I'll be taking three from this Killian here. But I can hopefully um, hold off the rest of his creatures. Yeah, if he wants to cast Star from scratch, yeah, this is, this is bad. At least I can just take three, maybe set up a double block next turn with a second Cultivator. I mean, I, this deck is just gross, I mean, so... Yeah, I think I'm just dead, unless I can cast maybe Quadrix Cultivator into Science. I guess that's the play. Grab red mana, since we kind of need it. Cast land into Cultivator. Get another forest down. And then, yeah, take three, and then... Hopefully not get run over, but yeah, his deck is really strong. Like a Mardu mid-range sort of deck. With powerful, uh... Uncommons and commons. Okay, that's not going to help. Let's cast our pop quiz. And that doesn't do much. So I can cast a Needlethorn Drake. And make a 1-1. To survive, which is pretty bad. Double block, block. Yeah, I'm just dead. I need, I need, I don't have any blockers for killing on, so. It's not going to happen. Oh well, that's, that's unfortunate. Just miss too many land drops, and that's how you get punished in games of magic. Either not drawing your spells, or again, not drawing your lands. But I think I'd rather flood than get screwed in magic, for the most part. Since there's a chance that if, if you flood, you can still have like powerful, expensive spells to cast. Like Obviously, flooding is not very good in an aggro deck, but can be decent in even mid-range or control decks. Okay, um, well, it's not looking good. I need more lands, so I think I'm going to mulligan this. Um, okay, this looks slightly better, and I think I want more blue than green, so I think I um, bomb a forest, and hopefully just get to turn four with the uh, Cultivator, and then the Cultivator can just make a multiple choice and Leyline Invocation. Because, I'm, because I have basically four draw steps to hit a land, and it's mostly likely I will end up hitting land, so that's fine. Okay, I mean, in games of magic, you're supposed to draw cards, right? So... I'll give it one more turn, but if I don't get a land, I might just cast multiple choice for two. Set him back and scry for a land and draw. Since it's kind of crazy how we're not even getting our lands for some reason, so... I can always bounce this back to be annoying. I mean, it's pretty annoying. Let's do it. And we got tap land anyway, so we'll see go. Guess now I'm more happier casting this for four. I can always bounce, can always multiple choice for three. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I guess multiple choice for two wasn't great because I can only choose one, so I think I want to get out the Cultivator here. And 
then we just want to grab a force, I think, to keep it even. And we have triple blue for the for our orc anyways, so that's fine. Um, so probably some sort of pump trick. Yeah, this is a strange attack. I think it's a pump trick, so maybe it's fine to just stay back here. And then we can do X plus 4 and bounce this creature back. Or keep up divide by 0, but I think I like X equals 4 here. And maybe I can set up some sort of double block of some sort. Arcane Subtraction isn't too bad. Also a nice trick to have as well. I can always bounce my Cultivator, but it just takes too much mana to cast. So I think I'm fine with this. So I might just attack for 3 because I don't plan on blocking. And I'd rather just keep up all my instances instead, so... Maybe that's fine. Or he might just recast this and try to cast his dumb combat trick. That's interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. Guess I'm fine attacking for three. Wondering why he decided to bounce a Storm Kiln Artist when it's the more expensive card. I mean, the Tome Shredder makes more sense, right? Because it's cheaper. And you typically want to cast a cheaper card, usually. So, that's kind of awkward. So I can pop quiz and draw, or I can just play golden ratio and draw two and keep up arcane subtraction. I think I like the golden ratio since um, pop quiz usually... Um, okay, this is fine. Again, then we can keep up three mana for pop quiz end of turn. I can always attack for four, which I'm also fine with as well. And if he goes for some sort of double block, we can arcane subtraction to blow him out. Okay, let's see what trick he has. Infuriate. So if it's an Infuriate, I could bounce. Um, but I'm also liking just Arcane Subtraction onto this. And that's still fine. And then we can still grab Environmental Sciences to find our red mana. Does he have a second one? I guess he can always exile the spell to keep his creature alive. So maybe I should have thought of that <coughs> that before using... Just surprised he didn't exile the spell, because if he did, it would have survived. Um, so, kind of an interesting why he decided to let that resolve. I should have just played the bye by zero then. Um, so now I guess I can cast Eureka Moment. Can always make a 6-6, six, six, but I think I want to just cast bigger spells, so I think it's fine saying go, and then we can keep up pop quiz and divide by zero. I don't really care if we pop quiz is end of turn or anything, so. So opponent doesn't seem to have much here. Then I can still cast Environmental Sciences, find my red mana. Um, question is, am I fine attacking? I can, I can just make a giant Leyline Invocation instead. I could always divide by zero and attack, but that doesn't seem great. I can always play a 4-drop into something, but maybe the Leyline is fine for now. And then we can attack for 9 and um, go from there next turn. So, we'll see, go. Could have a burying books end of turn as well on a 9 9. You no, 
no reason to attack because he can just double block. And then we can keep up all the instant speed for days. Basically, the opponent isn't doing much. He could have expensive uh, Prismari cards that he's been saving. But yeah, I mean... <coughs> his card quality doesn't look impressive. Okay, um, we just need green mana. I think this is a fine keep. Not sure though. I mean, here's our green mana. I could always cycle the elemental masterpiece, but I don't see a reason to unless I'm trying to ramp up the cultivator quickly. Um, yeah, I don't see a reason to just say go. We can play the cultivator and then maybe have access to five mana eventually. Just take one for now. The Silver Quill decks can definitely be very scary once they start loading up counters onto things. And have cards like Kilion, but if we can just ramp to the late game and win, that's better. So let's just do that. So we'll take three, and then we can always just cast multiple choice or leyline invocation next turn. And then we'll grab our green source. Probably just gonna cast the um, leyline invocation and stay back. Then we can cast the Elemental Masterpiece. Maybe just load up counters here. Okay, Essence Infusion. So we're going to take five. I mean, if the opponent has a bunch of cheap removal, we're basically dead. So, um, yeah, let's just hope and pray. I can also just multiple choice and set him back. But he's mostly just going to attack with the Flyer, I think. Um, so maybe just cast a Leyline. Just to be mana efficient and then stay back against Kilion. Yep, don't want to take two. And then once we cast Elemental Masterpiece, we can start hammering down. As long as he doesn't have like a Mage Hunter's Onslaught or anything here, I think we should be okay. If we have enough lands, we can eventually multiple choice and golden ratio. Okay, so he's spending a whole turn just to fly over and attack for five. At least he's spending his mana and just trying to kill me quickly. So I don't come across like study breaks. Burying book is really nice. Okay, so if I have three mana for burying books, I can cast also three mana for golden ratio. But might just want to cast the elemental masterpiece and hopefully he doesn't kill me next turn. Which he probably won't because it's going to be a ton of mana requirements. And then, yeah, I think I like the Masterpiece here for sure. And just go really big. And then maybe we can... I can cast Multiple Choice for actually just two. And keep up Burying Books as well. Maybe next turn.
if he wants to do this again, then he's going to fall behind, and then I can still, like, bury books or multiple choice next turn for two. If I multiple choice for four, I guess I can always just keep up the, um... The ability still, maybe Rise of Exodus, but he would use it on the six sticks if that makes more the most sense. So I probably need to keep up burying books next turn. Otherwise, that's going to become a problem. Ooh, Decisive Denial is really nice as well. So this is five mana. I have seven mana. So if I Golden Ratio, I can. Draw three cards. I think I want a golden ratio, and then I guess I'm fine tapping one of each here. And then we can also just decisive them now, and also just burying books, which is very strong. So this seems great. Although no freaking lands. Yeah, we don't have lands. That's going to be a pro become a problem. So I think we just want to attack with all. Maybe fight the three four. I mean, this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess it's, he's going to be at 17, so I don't really want to attack with all. I mean, it's maybe attacking for with 2 is fine. And then we can, at the same time, we can still set some sort of double block or fight effect. Or bounce effect on this flyer, so we'll see. I thought I would get a land. If I did, I would have been in better shape, I think. But if he wants to just exile here, then I can fall to 1 or fall to 4. And uh, win. Maybe just see a removal spell. Sure. I can always just bounce the pillar drop rescuer since he can't cast it, recast it. Um, or I can just fight it. Um, am I afraid of any pump effect? Like, a pump effect is going to be bad regardless. So I think I just balance the pillar drop rescue and hopefully he doesn't have, like, a beaming defiance here, which he probably does. Yep, it's good games. Yep. Always a nice combat trick to have. I, I, if I had one land, I could have maybe survived since I could have kept up both instances to blow him out, but... Yeah, sometimes drawing three cards just can't hit your land drops, so just got cheesed out by another silver gold deck, so not feeling good here, but hey, you can't win them all. And that was our first loss at least, so um, don't have to feel too bad about that. If we if we had a land, I could have kept up both instances, the bounce and the fight spell, but that was very unfortunate. Killan is just so powerful, a 3 mana Rise of Exodus is insane. Definitely one of the best uncommons you can open, and probably first pickable over even like the more flexible options. Alright, hopefully we can get there, but we have all our all of our colors this time. Probably start with the colony, because I'd rather have the colony die than the Needlethorn Drake. But it really depends on the type of the match, of course. So we'll see. I mean this the um I could just be tempted to run out the colony here. Although if he puts counters onto this, that's annoying. Uh, maybe I'd rather have the Reach creature and then just trade off the Death Touch creature. Or I can just take one and then keep this back. Maybe force a removal spell. Because I don't really care about taking one from this. This just might this might just disincentivize an attack. And it's better off trading for the 3-3 anyways. Um, so I think we're just going to cast Field Trip for sure. Get our green source sorted out and then... Don't want extra land. Um, might just want Fractal Summoning since I probably have enough ramp already in my hand. And we'll say go. 
don't mind trading for the 3-3. Three, three. If he has a trick, he has a trick, but at least I'm not taking 3. And then next turn, the Cultivator can block this. Maybe see a removal spell. Okay. Decided to um, save the cheap removal. Makes sense. And then I think I like the Cultivator here. Into, I think, another forest, since we have almost most of our blue already. I can also just play Island and play a 2-drop. But if by playing a tap land, I can play an elemental summoning next turn, so I think that's better. And I think I'm blocking this. I'm fine with combat trick. Maybe see the three mana one that makes you learn. Yep. I have to eventually make him play it, so that's fine. Even though I'm taking a ton of damage, hopefully the elemental masterpiece can help me stabilize. And then I can play Skirt Colony, keep up counter spells for days. I do maybe I just make a giant token, perhaps. Then I can keep up Skirt Colony and then the rest of my tricks. And then I might just outrace him, even if he's attacking for me with one in the air. He still needs to pay mana to get this flying, which is going to take a while, so... I think I'm fine just playing out the Fractal Summoning, take one and attack for eight. Probably needs to hit his land drop, of course. But doesn't even play a land, wow. Um, yeah, that's definitely very questionable. I think I like to attack with both and then use a, use a bounce spell to maybe blow him out. Or a fight spell. Um, yeah, we're definitely killing the Stonebound Mentor. And then I think I like Decisive of the Now, so then I can play Skirt Colony and then play Golden Ratio. So yeah, I think I like that. Hopefully he doesn't cast like a random devastating mastery out of nowhere in two turns. And we'll draw two cards. I think I'm fine with that. He can still play a campus. And attack for 12. I think I'm fine attacking the fall and then just casting a large fractal summoning token. I don't care about the chump. Devastating Mastery 6 mana, so I need to be aware of that, but right now I can just make a 6-6. Six, six. And then we also have removal to clear a path and then kill him. So yeah, he needs the he needs devastating mastery here, but he needs but that's six mana, so um highly doubt he has a board wipe and we probably just win here. Okay-ish red-white aggro, but still kind of, um, still, you can't miss your land drops if you're playing cards like Enthusiastic Study, and Introduction is really expensive, so. Wow, I didn't mention, okay, that's not enough. I guess that's what he was saving for, but, <coughs> yeah, our guys are just too big, so sorry, opponent. If he cleared both the 4-4s, four I mean, I saw the 6-6, six, six, so, he was still pretty far behind regardless.
Okay, um, this hand doesn't look great. We really need a lot of lands, and then just cycling Arcane doesn't seem like it's worth it, so I think we mull. This hand seems a little bit better. I think I'm keeping, and then the card I want to bottom. Probably Ley Line, since I can easily draw two cards off of these, so I think that's okay. And then hopefully pick up some more top end cards. So, Wither Room deck. Okay. Biomathematician is pretty cool. Although, we're still going to draw two cards with it. If he attacks, the question is, do I block? I don't mind just blocking, really. Um, and then we just want to curve out. Eventually, just cast Golden Ratio to draw a bunch of cards and hopefully refuel and recover from the mulligan. Probably just the Inkling Summoning. If he attacks, do I even consider blocking? Probably not. I mean, there's a chance he could have, like, Death Touch, which is, uh, pretty annoying, but that's fine. Um, yeah, let's just cast this, and then next turn we can keep up Decisive Denial and Needle Thorn Drake, so... That's pretty nice, and then the question is, do I block this? Probably not still. But, I mean, a trade isn't that bad, honestly. This card can be pretty annoying. And then we don't also don't have any large creatures to fight this and survive, so maybe the trade is still fine. <coughs> so if he attacks here, what's the worst case scenario? Fortifying Draught. That's annoying. I guess that's also just very annoying, so... Alright, I guess we might just need our Death Toucher then. And opponent still passes the turn, okay. Ooh, I guess I can cast a Needlethorn Drake. And then just stay back. So you go. If he's a removal spell, I can still blow him out by using the Drake to fight. If he decides to kill it. I can always just counter it. I mean, countering is okay, actually. So yeah, let's just do that. In this way, the Needlethorn Drake can still block the 3-1. And I'm still fine with the trade here. And probably another Inkling something. Okay, let's draw two cards. And hopefully this isn't too bad. And then, I guess we can always stay back here and then we can multiple choice for four make a four four and bounce something back and hopefully draw into something good so we pretty much have the late game covered the opponent's still kind of behind here um yeah let's just do it for four right and i do i think i have a mage duel in this deck not sure Guess I'm fine attacking with both now. Fine with the trade as well. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit hard for him to win here. About from here on out, these creatures just don't look very powerful. Cemetrist, sure. Tempted by Auric is really powerful, but probably lead with a... Uh, I mean, I can steal the card, but I think I'd rather just lead with the pop quiz first. And see what I draw. And we just draw a bunch of lands all day. Let me just cast Fractal something, play land. Maybe I just steal the token, not sure. I think I'm fine maybe attacking for four here and trading then. Like, trade actually is not that bad, if you think about it. So he's attack me for 6. I think I'm fine just stealing the token then. 
Might have like a plum, for, plum the forbidden. Yep. I knew this was coming. Yeah, that's annoying. I can still make a large token next turn. Tendrils, sure. It's pretty good. Moldering Karak. Burying books. Okay, so how, how large can I make this? A 6-6 six, six seems pretty reasonable. And hopefully no removal for the opponent. Like, any removal like Rise would be really annoying. Just an intro if I get to draw a card still. I mean, still not good for me, so... Probably no need to block since they all trample. And wow, I just keep drawing lands all day. Can I finally have a spell off the top, please? A field trip is very medium. I guess I'm forced to cast this anyway. Grab a land. And then hopefully just grab a bigger summoning. So if I cast a summoning here, what happens? It's not even large enough, so I think we just say go. I <coughs> take three, use the buried books on the 4-4 at least to buy me some time. Hopefully he just doesn't kill me here out of nowhere. I mean, I drew a lot of cards already and I have most of my land, so... I think I need some bombs, please, opponent. Pledge Mage is nice. So if I cast a Pledge Mage here, I can make a 1. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can make a 6-6. Six, six, which is alright. Probably that's okay, since I need to grow the Pledge Mage eventually, so... Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. And also gives me an extra blocker. And probably find scrying on my up. So you go. Removal would be pretty annoying here. Scrying is still fine here. Arcane subtraction is okay. Hmm, maybe I need to start getting aggressive and attacking. I mean, if he attacks back, I can always arcane subtraction, take three on the way back. So I, I think I want to attack here. Because I need to eventually close out the game here, so I think it's fine to be aggressive, and then I can always Arcane Subtraction on the 5-4, block it, and then trade for the Motor Karak next turn, so that's okay. <laughs> I'm thinking this is just a land. I can afford to take one, so we want to block here, block here, I mean, now we want to block here, with the block steps before damage, we can just cast our main subtraction here, and then I can finally grab my final lesson from the sideboard, and I think I'm going to allow this to happen. And just cast a giant leyline invocation. So let's just get this down first, of course. I think I need to be aggressive. And then hopefully no removal. I can always block the 5-4 and chump the 4-4. That's a bomb. Okay. Yeah, how am I supposed to beat that? I guess you can't. I guess I just need to go all out and kill him. I guess he can only make one token per turn. So let's scry here. 
Quandrix Cultivator, do I want that? So I'm attacking with everything next turn. He can only make one token. That's a 3-2. So let's see, he, he cheat, let's say he uh, double blocks, kills one. I mean, he needs to chump, chump. He needs to chump basically with both. I can get him down to eight. Play a Cultivator. I, I think I like the Cultivator. And then, let's see, he can chump here, he can block here, block here, chump here. I think he needs to block with all, so let's just get in there. Like, there's no way we're winning this game by just staying back. He can, he can only make one to the, to the finale, <coughs> and that's not enough damage to uh, kill me, so I think this is fine. I think I just want to thin out my deck more, and then I should still be able to scry and uh, find something, so this is okay. Take three. So he would need a pump trick into a removal spell, but yeah, I don't think that's enough. Dramatic finale is cute and all, but he needs to pump the 3-2 with two power to kill me. I think I'm fine with this block. I don't even care about the token here because I can just um, swing back for lethal. That's cute, but yeah, it's not going to do it. Now he can't really gain life by sacrificing his stuff, so. Alright, currently 4 and 2, so we made back most of our gems, and this deck is pretty good, so I'm quite happy with the results. Okay, uh, Cultivate, Quandrix, I think I like this, this is fine. And then we can maybe find more blue mana for the Cultivate. Although, we have enough, so I'm hoping we just don't draw on a million lands here. And then we can actually find some better spells. Alright, let's Cultivate here, find our red and green I think. So another teamer deck. I'm hoping I can draw more than just lands here. Come on, guys. I mean, I know I'm running 17, but come on. I guess the opponent also wants lands, so... I mean, how do you play magic without lands, guys? Field trip and didn't ramp? That's really strange. Yeah, that's definitely a very strange. Um, don't see that too often, so I guess we're just going to play the Cultivator. And we want to just grab maybe like a forest... Or another island, it doesn't matter, just an island, I guess. And then we'll play Force and then play our two drop. Need some more late game stuff. So I'm surprised he didn't search a forest from his deck. That tends to be a really odd strategy. I think I stay back here, play mountain, attack for one. Keep up the divide by zero. He can always divide by zero to Professor end of turn, but he just makes another pest token, which <coughs> which I don't necessarily like. It's fine. Also fine with the attack. Um Yeah, I think I'm fine with this. 
I can just make a giant fractal token. Or an elemental summoning, maybe that's just better. Fine with the trade. Pawn can make chump blockers, but I'm also fine with that as well. <coughs> but he's also just behind here. So um, I could cast Barry, but I don't think it's worth it. Guess we can just make a 7 7. I think I'm fine sending all. If he wants to double block the 5-5, five, five, that's okay. He's losing both creatures. And I still have a 7-7 seven, seven and a 4-4 four, four back on defense. So that seems okay. And then he's just going to take a ton of damage here. He's 4-4s four, in the meantime. and Yeah, he's just too behind on board here. I'm surprised he just didn't find a forest with the field trip. Was that the... I guess he was splashing for the field trip. <clears throat> Not sure, but that was definitely a very, very odd. Cultivate, sure. So we can two drop into Cultivate. Or Biomathematician if we want to be more aggressive. Really depends. Um, I mean, the Cultivate route just allows me to deploy bigger stuff, right? And I can't really attack past this anyways, and we do have a Ley Light Invocation coming, so... Yeah, why not? Let's just grab blue and red mana. Red and then blue mana, and then we want the red mana to come and tapped, of course, so he can't interfere with it. So you go. The strict proctor will deny me a fractal token, though, with the bio mathematician, so that's a little bit annoying. The question is, do I even want the token? Maybe not. Maybe just play Quandrix Pledge Mage into Skirt Colony. Or just keep up the arcane subtraction. Um, I think I'll play the skirt colony. This way, I can get I can just get rid of it. I mean, I can just deal with it right now. And then if he gives us flying, I think I'll take it since he, he <coughs> could have a plethora of combat tricks that can blow me out. I might find with a trade here. I mean, it's going to be annoying later. But I kind of like my reach creatures. Eh, you know, let's just take it. Multiple choice for four is really good. And I just think I, I think I just want to hit my land drops. Um, Elemental masterpiece is just so darn good, though. Can I really afford to bottom this? I think I have to. Yeah, I think I have to. And I can still attack for three, I guess. And then we can still play Quadrix Vader into maybe Arcane Subtraction. That's fine. 
Do I just double block the Silver Quill Pledge Mage or just put one in front of it? Might just have to put one in front of it. <coughs> Puts this as a 3 4, so probably not going to double block this Spectre Fence. Um, or I should. Okay, so if he goes like this, I don't mind double blocking the Spectre. Yeah, double block, double blocking this is alright. He knows about the Arcane Subtraction already, and Spectre is going to be more strong in the future, so... Alright, land is fine, and then, I mean... I like... Yeah, he's just dead here. So, Teamer Ramp... Quandrix and um, Silver Quill, I think, are the best decks. Prismari, again, somewhere in the middle. And then Wither Bloom, slightly l l less powerful than Prismari, but can, can become strong when it comes together. And then Lorehold usually doesn't. Uh, the whole <coughs> Reanimator Quintorius thing with Lorehold doesn't usually come together. It's probably the worst archetype. The only real like um, Lorehold deck, I think, is an aggro Lorehold, which can, again, come together <coughs> at times, but still, it's. Um, it's not very good unless you open up cards like Blade Historian or or Cole or Cord, the uh, Forge Master. So okay. Um, well, we have Cultivate on three, and we're on the play. So I think we're trying going to try this out, and then hopefully uh, we don't get run over. So you probably want another red source or green, not sure. Really depends. Um, yeah, let's cultivate here. Uh, you know what? Let's grab a green source because I think um, I think we'll eventually get triple blue for our um, what you call it? Our um, our spell, and there we have it. So let's play the force, and I think we just keep everything up, right? I could pop quiz into a two drop. Don't really see a reason to divide by zero, so I think I think we want to keep up green, of course. So let's tap like civilized people. Pop quiz and ooh, dice, decisive denial. Um, yeah, we're about to get our lands anyway, so I think we just grab a fractal summoning, say go, and then we can decisive denial and keep up a counter spell for a non-creature spell, and that's pretty awesome. Let me just cast leyline here. Could see a mage hunter's onslaught. Opponent's not doing much for just four lands. I mean, is it just game over here? I mean, this into Elemental master Pass Masterpiece is kind of broken. That's fine. Maybe take away the Masterpiece. And then we can still make a pretty large Fractal Summoning token. Yeah, it's probably the Masterpiece here. Opponent, you want to take this away, not this. There you go. Get rid of the masterpiece. But still far behind. Um, could field trip, but nah. I think I just want to grab more, apply more board presence. So, high for six, and then here I guess we can make a five five, which is very threatening. And then we can still field trip, and then <coughs> grab a fractal something and go from there. That's fine. Sure. Sack the weaker card. Professors, whatever. Guess we want a field trip. I guess I want to attack first, of course. He's probably going to chump, which I'm okay with. And then we can keep up some of our tricks. And thin out the deck even more with a field trip. Put more forest down, grab more fractal summonings, play more lands, and then keep everything up, I say, and just say go. I can always bounce back a removal with divide by zero <coughs> as well, so. I can always fight this end of turn as well, and then cast divide by zero. Just fight the Symmetrist.
Um, interesting. I could just, again, divide here. Take four. That's fine. And then if he tries to use some sort of death touch trick, I can blow him out. So yeah, I think I like this. Just using this to fight this. And then we can just keep up divide by zero. Cultivator is nice. But I think I might just want a giant fractal token. Let's attack for six. And how much is this? I guess a 7-7 seven, seven isn't too bad. And then we can draw three cards with the Cultivator next turn. <coughs> so yeah, don't sleep on Fractal Summonings, guys. And if he has a removal, we can bounce back and hit for seven, but I don't see a reason to. That's fine. I can draw. I can just draw more, even more cards if he wants to sack things. I guess a fight spell. Sure, that's cute. Arcane summoning subtraction. I don't mind that as well. I think I'm fine attacking for 6, and if he blocks, just use Arcane Subtraction. Totally fine by me. This is a totally fine trade. I can cast the Cultivator. Get the land. And then I can cast Environmental Sciences to thin out my deck. Since I didn't play my land yet. Grab another force. Yeah, we just want to thin out the deck here so we don't draw too many lands again. And this is good. <coughs> Still have two bounce spells, and I can make a 12 12. No reason to block. Because this is just lethal, and then he knows we have a bounce trick, and if he double spells, I can just deal with it. Sure. Heat the bait is fine. I'm gonna find just attacking for three here. Playing out a 12 12 serpent. And then keep up both our instances here. <coughs> and he's probably just dead here. The Mythic Uncommon, too bad. Would've been better in my deck. Um, decline. And that's what we call Team Ramp, folks. Couldn't even stand a chance. Alright, nice uh, 7 and 2. And uh, yeah, Team Ramp is the way to go. Or Silver Quill, so don't sleep on those archetypes. Um, and this deck, this draft was definitely very solid, and I was quite impressed by the um, by the deck. Almost got swept though, but um, yeah, we still managed to get seven and two, which is really nice. So now I can add this. I guess I already added it multiple times already. Let's see the weird jank I've been drafting. So yeah, probably yeah, I probably added it already too many times. This was a Witterbloom deck from the last video. <coughs> uh, this deck went 6-3, and three, even though it almost had the same cards as the deck we did. This was a very weird Silver Quill deck where Silver Quill was open, but we only had a, we had 0-3 drops. So yeah, not bad. Um, let's go back to our deck. Take a snapshot, of course. And then let's just go over it real quickly. Oh, never mind. I just claimed the prize already. So, yeah, <coughs> I was about to go over the deck, but I guess I can go over the deck after I claim this prize and open up my pack. So, let's do some pack cracking first. Pack one, pick one. Let's pretend we're drafting Strixhaven. Uh, yeah, Quadrix Command is pretty busted. I would take it over Burying Books and Heated Debate, even though it is two colors. Still very splashable. You can still splash green in a Prismari deck or play this straight up in Quadrix. Nice way to bounce a creature and also put counters onto something. So Quadrix Command is great. If Quadrix Command was in his pack, probably take Burying Books as probably the best common in this set overall, along with Heated Debate. 
Blackish Trudge is also pretty nice, same with Study Break, but still take these two over it, since I'm kind of biased uh, with the blue decks here. Um, take Field Trip, Mythic Common. Probably the best green common in the set overall. The ability to just learn and ramp is really powerful. And uh, usually, it's kind of funny because um, the only green deck that's really looking to ramp is Quandrix. But in the Winterbloom deck, if you have like field trips, you can actually be a little bit more mid-rangey. And play bombs like the um, Bookworm and uh, Leyline Invocations. And uh, this card is very good. So yeah, huge big fan of field trip. Not sure if I would take it over Heed Debate or uh, whatchamacallit. Burying Books, I probably might, given how strong this card is. But uh, definitely the best green common, undeniably um, the best green common, along with Mage Duel. Lightning Helix is very strong, even though it's double color. Again, pretty splashable in the Prismari decks. Um, Clever Lumomancer can also get out of hand if you can build around it, but has to fit in a specific uh, Silver Quill deck with lots of uh, ways to put um, Guiding Voices. But probably take Lightning Helix. Tenured Innkeeper hasn't been very impressive. And uh, yeah, we opened up one the worst command. Don't ever pack one, pick one this card. Um, it's very, it's yeah, very, it's very conditional. Not only do you not. Not only do you not care, if you want to mill cards from your library, you want to get back creatures, not lands. Um, the destroy target non-creature non-land permit barely comes up. There's not a lot of one toughness in this set. So the minus three negative one is going to be some medium combat trick or some way to deal with one toughness. Or, or the arrogant poets, which, you know, usually you don't want to um, play a rare just to kill. And um, yeah, the final ability is just really bad. doesn't really do much. Um, probably take combat professor. As a mini Sarah's Angel, as the pros like to call it, basically 4 man 3 3 Vigilance, which is excellent. Deadly <coughs> Brew can be decent as well, but probably take Combat Professor. And we'll take Rutha, our Mythic Uncommon. Uh, this card is pretty busted. Regrowth is also very strong, especially since I'm a big fan of uh, Teamer. The Teamer colors in this set, just being able to re buy some powerful uh, late game bombs. Uh, is really great. So regrowth could also be reasonable over Rutha since it's in one color. Uh, <coughs> Snow Day is also great, but not sure if I would take it over Rutha. Rutha is just kind of a mythic uncommon, and she's incredibly busted in the right Prismari deck. You can even splash her in a Quandrix deck, and then she can get out of hand as well, since she can just make multiple fractal tokens and fractal summoning tokens, and she's just incredibly busted. So yeah, I would probably still take Rutha here, but if Rutha wasn't as bad, I'll take regrowth. And uh, yeah, you, you can see why Wither Bloom just isn't great in this set, because there's just these crappy rares like Pestilent Cauldron, which just aren't very good since the discard ability puts you down a card. The, um, the second ability really doesn't, we're not really looking to mill in the set, mill the opponent out in the set, and then the four mana cost is um, just too too much work. Um, and the restorative burst um, is not that great. I mean, it's nice value since you can get back two creatures, but you can't get back tokens, and um, you also give the opponent life gain, so it's a pretty bad card. Probably take Rutha, and then Regrowth, and then Snow Day. <clears throat> Rutha has become the Mythic Uncommon, along with Kilion in the set. Ah, Blade of Storing is a bomb. Yeah, I would take Blade of Storing and maybe drop some sort of aggressive Lorehold deck. Again, the, Lore, the aggressive Lorehold, uh, Lorehold doesn't, isn't a great art guild. It's probably the worst co <coughs> college out of all four of them. But, but if you open up something like Blade Historian, you can maybe then maybe you can draft some sort of aggressive Lorehold deck and get there. Since Lorehold usually isn't very contested, given that it's the worst college, um, if it just becomes very open, you can make a very powerful Lorehold deck that can come that can compete toe to toe with a um, <coughs> Silver Quill deck with mul with two Killions or multiple Killions. So yeah, I would take the Blade Historian here, and no doubt if Blade Historian was in this pack, easy emergence sequence. Nice way to ramp and fix. And even if your land ends up dying, like it's not like you go down a card. <laughs> to be honest, you lose the land from your deck, but it's not like you're losing a card from your hand. Can be a little bit awkward if um, they end up killing your splash color, though. So make sure if you're playing Emergent Sequence, you might want to play um, two sources. Um, like maybe, yeah, two, two monocolor uh, sources for um, your third color. So for example, if you want to splash red in a teamer deck, you want to play two mountains to ensure that if the emergent sequence die, you have a backup mountain, or at least a campus. 
um, or at least the, that extra mountain, which can be searched up by like an environmental sciences. So definitely keep that in mind. But emergent sequence is very strong. And then here we have um, um, Ingenious Mastery versus Master Symmetrist. Ingenious Mastery I found to be incredibly powerful in Quandrix. In Prismari, not as much, since, um, you know, it's usually the Prismari ramp is kind of awkward, whereas the Quandrix ramp is very strong. Either way, Blue has a lot of card draw in this set, so it's not like you really, you necessarily need an Ingenious Mastery in your deck. Um, and it's a lot of mana, 6 mana draw, 3 is fine, but like, there's Eureka Moment, which is 4 mana draw, 2, put a land on the battlefield, which is better. Still a fine card, don't mind picking up if it comes late, but I would take the Symmetrist here. This card is very strong. 4 mana, 4 for Reach, that can give all of your um, Tractal creatures. Trample is really strong, so yeah, I'm a big fan of Master Symmetrist. And there you have it. Um, the draft was um, pretty fun. And I'm um, hoping you guys enjoyed this video. Might just fire off another Premier Draft Strixhaven so some of you who need help with this set can uh, understand it a lot better. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and uh, um, hope to uh, hear, um, hope you guys enjoy more future content. Um, I wish I can stream... Um, I mean, I wish I can uh, record uh, Modern Horizons 2 when it comes out because I'm going to study my butt off that set since it's going to be near... It's going to be released on my birthday, which is June 11. And I'm a big fan of Modern Horizons 1. But I might do some Modo, um, my Magic the Gathering Online, to uh, record that set. But for now, uh, thank you guys for watching. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more content. Have a great day. Bye.